Jefferson Hospital, Nederland. Power asked me to be their spokesman. I wanted to make sure it was a good match. So I took a tour of one of their factories. I found out that Cooper's been around since 1914, a time of grassroot values that still drive the company today. Hard-working folks dedicated to their craft. My kind of people, always striving to be the best. What better match? Cooper Tire. Drive on. Start with us. Lamar State College, Port Arthur. Start with us. Because there's so much we offer. We'll help you find a great career. Your future starts right here. Go with the best. When you want success, a great place. Lamar State College, Port Arthur. The Museum of the Gulf Coast in Port Arthur, Texas captures the ebb and flow of the Gulf. From gators to gutsy explorers, and from the spindle-top gusher to outer space. From our lighthouse overlook, view a magnificent mural that captures prehistoric and historic venues. Also, Browse exhibits of those who from the area have made an international impact on our modern world, such as rocker Janis Joplin, coach Jimmy Johnson, and famed artist Robert Rauschenberg. Museum of the Gulf Coast, open Monday through Sunday. Welcome to the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience. My name is Jim Barton along with Bob West of the Port Arthur News. And Bob, I believe that the Lamar Cougars won, but they've deferred to the second half, so the Indians will get the football first. This is the quarterfinals, or you can call it the Region 3 Division 2 final. And Jim, we're sitting behind the PNG fans, and as you would expect, they are packed in here. They far outnumber the Lamar fans on the other side of the field. Here we go. Here's the approach and the kick. It's going to bound into the end zone, and Wortham and Bergeron will let it go in the back of the end zone, and the Indians will get the football at the 20-yard line, starting off the first quarter from the Astrodome. 
Jim, I think it's really going to be important for the Port Nature's Groves offense to be able to establish something and move the ball. We've seen them do it all year. They're so well balanced running and throwing. Uh, they've got to help their defense tonight by keeping the Lamarck offense off the field. This Lamarck offense is dangerous and it's explosive. Well, the Indians go with two receivers on the far side. It's Justin Baxter and Joy Price. A split backfield and the Lamarck defense adjusting. Long's got some time. He throws downfield. He's got Baxter open near a first down. I believe he's got it. I think, Bob, the, the, the key right there was time for Dustin Long. Absolutely, Jim. He had time, it looked like, to maybe come off of his primary receiver, go to a second receiver, and uh, that's the way you want to start a tough ball game with a good positive play. Well, I believe Dustin's only been sacked five times this year, and I hope that trend continues where he just don't get sacked tonight. That's and, the key. And only thrown five interceptions. Jim. No doubt. Well, the Indians go with three receivers. Twins near side, one receiver far side. There's Bo Wortham. Well, early on here in the ball game, the holes are open. They'll take that gain all night long. That's six yards, five yards, right off right tackle. And you might mention those offensive linemen right now, Jim, those guys getting it done up front early on. Yeah, no question. The center is Brett Powers. The guards are Crochet and Adams. The tackles are Temple and Hopper. The tight end and a good one, C.J. Blyer, will set the rest of the offense in a moment. Dustin Long, second down Indians. Two receivers near side. Here's Dustin. He'll keep it on his own. He'll get to the 40-yard line, about a yard short of a first down for the rest of the uh, Indians on offense. Split end, Baxter. The fullback is Bergeron, the tailback Wortham, and the flanker Price, and the quarterback, Dustin Long. Bring up a third and short. Just outside the Indian 40 yard line. Third and short for the Indians as Joey Price comes out for a moment along with Baxter. Jim, Dustin Long is so effective carrying the ball, you would almost think that uh, would be a, a sneak, something maybe with him moving down the line and then diving forward. It is going to be a sneak, and Dustin Long has a first down for the Indians. Another great turnout by these Indian fans. Well, it's legendary that the following that Fort Nature's Groves has, Jim, and uh, they've certainly lived up to it here tonight, uh, just packed in on this side of the field up to about the fifth level of the Astrodome. Well, there's a penalty. It'll remain third down. Well, you hate to get those. Now, you, you had a first down, a new set of downs, and this comes on a, the simplest play of all, just the quarterback going straight ahead. Somebody must have flinched. Well, looking on the board, Bob West, we'll look at it here in a moment. All right. Two receivers on the far side. Third down Indians. Costly penalty, but how costly? Dustin throwing on the run. He's got a receiver, but short of a first down. I believe the Indians got to punt the football, Bob. And he got a little pressure that time. Had to go ahead and unload it to an underneath receiver. And that, that's truly unfortunate, Jim. They, they had the first down and lost it on a penalty. I see no way Matt Burnett would gamble at this point in the game, so they'll have to punt it away. Well, Dustin Long averaging 37.4 yards every time he punts the football. That's been an impressive year, but it's been an impressive year as a whole for Dustin Long. He's had a great senior year, and uh, with all the speed Lamarck has, you hold your breath on these kind of plays. He got it up high, though. High end-over-end -end punt. It'll take a favorable roll for the Indians and down at the 28-yard line. So all in all, not bad. And now the defense, Bob, that's going to be really tested tonight. This is really going to be a challenge for the, the uh, Indian defense against a Lamarck team that uh, is so explosive and scores so quick. Trevor McKenzie, the tailback, carried the ball 216 times for 1,648 yards and 26 touchdowns. He had... TDs of 75 and 68 yards last week. Well, Michael Hill, the quarterback. The lone setback is McKenzie. Here's McKenzie, a big hole. Give him about eight yards on the carry. And it was almost more, Jim. And I believe we've got Harold Mann down on the sideline. Guys, it's awful loud down here on the home side of the field. It's filled across the bottom, the mezzanine, and up into the lows. 
Matter of fact, this P&G crowd got kind of loud before the teams came out when the Lamarck band fired up Cherokee. I don't know if they tried to do an intimidation or what, but hey, the people in purple loved it. And the Lamarck Cougars will call a timeout. A timeout on the field with 8.32 to remaining in the first quarter, and uh, we have no score. Indians look good early on by moving the ball, unfortunate on that penalty. Jim, little things become big things in big games. You have a third down and a foot play. You get a motion penalty, cost you a first down. You wind up having to put the ball in the hands of this Lamarck offense instead of maybe continuing to drive downfield. Uh, based on what I've been able to find out about Lamarck, the Indians are going to have to play close to perfect football tonight. Limited penalties make some big plays and win turnovers to win this football game. Well, tonight's game brought to you in part by Superior Tire, one of our season-long sponsors, and we appreciate him. Also by Powerhouse Services, Pat Parrish and Jackie Williams. And I'll tell you, Bob, they have stepped up and they've supported the schools over the past several weeks, and we appreciate both Pat Parrish, Jackie Williams, and Powerhouse Services from the bottom of our hearts. Everybody, you bet. We appreciate all of you, and so do all the fans, I, because so many of them have expressed that to me. Also, the Mid-County Teachers Credit Union, Gwenda Scroggs, and the Lamar State College of Port Arthur. Second down, Lamar Cougars. Hill will throw the football. Looking downfield, great coverage. Oh, I'm telling you, there was a great shot out there by number 33 in the PNG secondary. And that's Chris Golke, and he sent a message that if you come through here again, uh, I'm going to be here, and you better not uh, be looking at the football. You're going to lose your head. No doubt. That'd be a good one. Well, I don't know if we've got time to see a replay on that or not, but, I mean, Golke decks this receiver, and I didn't see who the receiver was. Well, let's take a look at it. Try to get it, and uh, we'll get these bugs worked out in a moment. Here's Hill looking on the slant <laughs> pad, and look at the hit. What a hit. All right, third down and one for the Cougars. They go with an eye formation. First down, Cougars out to the 45-yard line, carrying the football. I couldn't tell. I believe it was number 34, wasn't it? Uh, now, that was number 24. That was Trevor McKenzie, the man we're going to be looking for all night long. But it, nevertheless, it's a... First down, Lamar Cougars with 8-18 to play in the first quarter. High formation, both the receivers, both far and near. Play action for Hill. Swings it. Catch is made near the 50-yard line. Gain of about four on the play. Sure like the aggressiveness with which the, the Indian defense is playing. There well, was another real shot that time. They're going to need it, Bob. Interesting that uh, to see Lamar come out and throw twice on the first four downs when they have really established the run quickly. And I've always felt like if you can run the football, run it until the other team can stop you, and then when they have to commit to stop you, it's going to be a lot easier to throw. Many thanks to the Museum of the Gulf Coast, McFerrin Insurance, Terry Schwartner, and Rick's Auto Body Accidents, our player of the game sponsor. Second down, there's the pitch. McKenzie to the outside. McKenzie is going to be stopped at the 50-yard line. Great containment that time by the defense. Terrific job of stringing the play out. Let's get a replay on that one if we can. Watch the Indian defense string the play toward the sideline. The sideline is their friend. And then help arrives. And uh, here, here we go. We're going to see pitch to the short side of the field. Cody Clark comes in to finish it up. Clark and Jeremy Neeb, but good job by the people up front to keep him running sideways. Well, the Lamar Cougars in their second third down situation, but right now it's third down six. Here's Hill. Here comes the pressure. Hill forced to roll, incomplete flags down, could be holding, Should which it. would be declined by the defense. Looks like it would be in the area of holding great coverage in the secondary by the Indians. And it is holding, and they will turn it down. And the PNG defense answers on the first possession. Well, many thanks to Nathan Dickerson over at Dickerson x line the Mid-Jefferson County Hospital, along with the Fitness and Sports Institute of Southeast Texas, 
and the local market basket stores. Chuck Barbie over there. The snap is a good one. Uh-oh, Shanks punt. Out of bounds. The Indians good field position, Bob West. And uh, that's a much better place to start than inside the 20, which is what they were looking at. So Dustin Long will have great operating position at 36. Bob, three of our sponsors have gotten on the Astrodome board again this week. Dickerson's Exxon, McFerrin Insurance, and how about Rick's Auto Body Excellence? It's, uh, it's just a little something extra, and it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, and, and, of course, they've been with us for a long time now. I think Nathan liked that uh, <laughs> scoreboard exposure the last uh, time he did it. I think he does. Three receivers for the Indians. Dustin Long, great coverage. I mean, great pass protection. Looking downfield, he's got his man at the 41-yard line. Well, that's a great catch by Joey Price. The ball a little low, a little underthrown. Price just goes down and gets it. This kid has really become a good receiver. If Dustin Long has hey man, that. I'm, let me take that back. Justin Baxter. Yeah. I'm hey Bob, giving the wrong here's guy. Here's the replay here. But if Dustin Long, we're not going to see it here, but if Dustin Long has that kind of pressure all night long, the Mark defense is in a lot of yeah. trouble. But again, Justin Baxter, great catch. In motion, Lumley coming near side. Here's a run. Bergeron, he's not going anywhere. Number 65 for the Lamar Cougars, Bob West. That's Andre Castile, 5'11", 170. They've got some beef up front. First uh, <laughs> run ran right into them. Great time for a run after the big first down pass. But a loss of one with 5.47 to play in the opening quarter. Second down and 11. Might be a good down for a screen pass, Jim. Lamarck, Lamarck's thinking pass. You've got to think they're coming after long right now. Indians, Bob, going with four receivers. Twins on both sides. But the pressure's good. I mean, the downfield. Very close to yeah. interference, and the PNG fans, they're screaming, and they should be. Let's see a replay on that, because I think the guy nearest to this side was bumping. Bo Wortham, the intended receiver. Again, Bob, Dustin Long with a lot of time to throw the football. Well, we got we got it yeah. late, but uh, the guy the nearest to us, to me like had his hands on, uh, on Wortham. Well, another third down coming up for the Indians. Hey, it's not gonna be easy against this tough Lamar defense. Bob, they go trip formation, then they're going to put Price in motion going far side. Straight drop for Dustin. The catch is going to be made by Bo Wortham. He's going to drag down to the 35-yard line. Bob, I believe they're in the area of four down territory. Well, that, that play gives them, puts them in a real decision situation now on the 36. Fourth and about four. And it looks to me like Matt Burnett's going to go for it. And I think in this spot on the field, I think that's a very, that's a good good decision. Look at there, Bob. Rick's Auto Body Excellence, the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience Player of the Game sponsor. How about that? Hey, Rick, we appreciate being on that board with you. Big play early in the game. Fourth down and four for the Indians. From the 36-yard line, it's a passing situation. Here blitz. comes the blitz. Their screen pass is made. Bo Wortham, first down Indians, down to the 22-yard line. Let's replay that one. Great poise by Dustin Long in the face of a blitz. It's a huge play for the Indians. I think we're going to see it again here. It's either a linebacker or a safety coming right up the middle of the field. Nice work by Wortham yeah. after the catch. All right, first down Indians, 4-18 to play in the first quarter. Here's Dustin. He's going to keep it, option. Give him two on the carry down to the 18-yard line. I'll tell you, Bob, as the game goes on, Lamarck fans continue to come in, but uh, so do the Indian fans as well. Uh, no question about who has the most fans here tonight. <laughs> If the number of fans translated into points on the scoreboard, the Indians would be up about 10 nothing right now. 
And Bob, many thanks to Smitty's All Cloth Car Wash and Quick Loop, Brett Smith, along with C.A. Turner Construction, Jim McVeigh. Second down seven for the Indians. Ah, the sweep. And going nowhere. In fact, is there a loss on the play? <laughs> like maybe about a yard loss. Pat Howard, that's one of their better defensive players for Lamarck. They're really high on him. Probably going to be hard to go wide against this defense. Howard is 6'2", 230, Jim, and he can really move an outstanding now, defensive that's player. That's a big for time Larry Division I prospect yep. right there. Leads the team in tackles. In fact, his whole job out there is just to follow the ball. All right, third down, seven Indians from the 18-yard line. Will Dustin have the time? So far, it's holding up. Throws it to last second. The catch is made. Fumble on the play. There's a penalty. It could be a face mask. I don't believe Is the pass going to be complete? I think it is. Okay, that was the, the flag I saw coming in there. you got to hope it is a face mask. Go ahead and roll it. Going to get another look at here while the officials are making their decision. Ah, pass interference against the defense. He went long, got that ball into a tight space that time, but the Indians catch a little bit of a break and get a first down. Again, Dustin Long showing a lot of poise. Also showing why he was a big time prospect. <laughs> Baxter, Bob West, a receiver to the near side. They split their backfield. Here's Long, a long count. They need to run the ball, Bob, and they're finding tough. It's tough going right now. That's big physical people up front for Lamarck, and you just know where the door just slams on Mo Worth. You talk about an offensive line that has a burden tonight. Ho, ho, ho. Well, I think, you know, just from what we're seeing early on, Dustin Long will have to, and the receivers, and the pass protector, are going to have to have a big game. It's going to be tough to run against these people, at well, least until they open them up a little bit. Second down and nine. Lone setback is Bergeron. Could it be a draw? No, it's not. He's throwing to the end zone. Touchdown, Indians. Justin Baxter, Bob West. Baxter broke open across the middle. We're going to get another look at it. The Indians strike first. And I'm telling you, Dustin Long hummed that football. All right, we're going to see it again. Again, they give him good time to set up, square up, and deliver a strike. I'll tell you what, Bob, what a rocket arm that is. And Justin Baxter did the one thing a receiver's got to do when he's open. He caught the football. Well, Joey Price, the extra point attempt coming up with uh, Jonathan Lumley, the holder. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Well, it's a great start for the Indians, Jim. You come I in, agree. you're the underdog. Everybody has Lamarck favored. And they, their defense asserted themselves on their first possession. The offense came right back with an impressive scoring drive of 64 yards. Well, Bob, as the people are watching the broadcast tonight, the outcome is already in effect, but I'll tell you, as you watch a game, you've got to be excited right now, but uh, we know in watching a game, things can change in a hurry. And it will change. I mean, this is, uh, this is going to be a tough football game for 48 minutes tonight, but you like the spunk the Indians have shown. There's Nathan Dickerson. I like the way the PNG defenders have come out and really busted some Lamarck people. You know what? Nathan's everywhere. My wife stopped in at Nathan's yeah. service station the other day to tell him how much we all appreciate what he's done. And uh, he was telling her it, it, he doesn't think he's ever done anything advertising-wise that has had the kind of response that the Port Arthur News Friday night experience has We hope to. everybody keeps that in mind at these oh, Indians that, advance. That, absolutely right. I Here. think all of our advertisers feel like that. Uh-oh. 
That caught the Lamarck Cougars off balance right there, Bob West. Well, Jim, that's a great strategy. There wasn't so much the kind of thing you think you're going to run down and recover a kick, but you take their big kickoff return speed out of the game. I think Matt Burnett would take them starting at the 28-yard line every time. Helped when the ball bounced past the first man. Well, that, Bob, the, the, uh, I guess the modus operandi, as I like to say, Bob, Nehemiah Glover, their primary receiver. you got to watch him. McKenzie, what a great tailback, over 1,600 yards rushing. That man's going to be heard from tonight, and then the quarterback can make it happen in Michael Hill. Yep, they've got their own triplets, but McKen uh, McKenzie's the one that scares me. There's a sweep. McKenzie to the outside. Defense stringing him and out again, loud. And again, the PNG defense does a terrific job stringing McKenzie. This is... Tremendous defensive play. Uh, we haven't mentioned Ken Cummings near as much as we should, the PNG defensive coordinator. He's got his kids playing this play. This is textbook here. They slide down. They keep forcing him to the sideline. Cannot turn the play up the field. You That's great defense. You think they scouted Lamar? What do you think? I think they're ready to play. I believe they are. Well, Bob, a minute and 49 to play in this opening quarter. The Indians with 83 total yards so far. Second down, Lamar Cougars. Uh-oh, here's a pressure on Hill. He breaks. He throws downfield. Oh, the catch is going to be made to the 41-yard line. That was a great play by Michael Hill. Let's get a replay on that because he was almost sacked. That's a great play by the quarterback. And then the ball was almost tipped away. Two shots PNG had at it. And that was Nehemiah Glover, the receiver we were talking about, Bob West. But look, this is this. I thought it was going to be a sack right there. And then a nice throw and a nice catch. Almost knocked away. Chris Gokey was just fingertips away from breaking the play. That's a big lift for Lamarck. Now the Indian defense back to work. Do they go back to the sweep? Hand off to the fullback, give him two, maybe three on the carry. Tate and Company Collision Repair. Trent Phelps, thank you very much for all your help this year. Southern Union Gas, Greg Powell, and Bob Costello Realtors, Biff Burroughs. We thank each and every one of them. Bob, and you sponsored that uh, call this week and got a hold of us, Triangle Chevrolet, Bob Grooms. He said he'd love to talk to us first of the year about a sponsorship for all of next season. Well, Jim, I've always thought we should have some kind of car dealership on this show week to week throughout the season. I think as word has gotten around, people understand how many uh, prospective customers they reach on this telecast. Like there's a procedure penalty against Lamarck. Going to take it back five yards and make it first and 15. But you talk about when you want to reach somebody, when you're doing TV advertising, you want to know that people are there. I guarantee you they're there on the Friday night experience. What success we've had on the Internet this year as well as far as our live broadcast. And we got, to, like I said, I had the emails this week to back that one up. No doubt about that. <coughs> first down 15 for the Cougars. Ah, that young man is tough, but great coverage. Who made that tackle? Was it Sean Bud Lane? Wine and, uh, Sean Lane. Yeah. Lang up to help out Bud Wine, but this is a great open field tackle here. Okay, we're going to see it again. Now, looks like he's going to pop it for some pretty good yardage. Boom, right there, Bud Wine slows him down. And Sean Lang finishes him off. Well, many thanks to Jeffrey Price, a veterinary over at Twin City Veterinary, veterinary Clinic. Uh, his son's Joey Price. Jeffrey, we thank you very much. Also, East Tech Lube, the Hardys on Magnolia. Thanks as always. Counter. Not going anywhere. I'll tell you what, Bob, the defense ready to play tonight. Cody Clark holding his ground. Waiting right in the hole for the ball carrier. I'm telling you, this is a very well prepared Port Nature's Grove's defense. And Bob, we had uh, Big J, Mom and Dad, Mark and Fran Domain say, that's the end of our first quarter. Matter of fact, Fran Domain came in the booth tonight and said, tell my son hello, and I said, we'll do just that. And that's a big son to say hello to. Yes, it is. And she wanted to get it done bad enough, Jay. She, she practiced down in the booth before the game. 
Also something to pass along, Bob. I was talking to, uh, you remember the kicker for the Needland Bulldogs last week, Drew Gallagher. Have some uh, bad news to report on that injury he had. That young man apparently severed his posterior ligament, tore his anterior. That young man's got a long rehab process, but you know what? The young man says, Sell a ho say hello to my cousin, who is Blake Hopper, plays for these PNG, PNG Indians. Well, best of luck to you, Drew. That's, uh, that's a tough break. All right, another big down for the PNG defense. This probably uh, is four down territory now for Lamarck. They're inside the 40 yard line and uh, wanting to get something going <coughs> offensively. Well, we move to the uh, second quarter of play, third down seven for the Cougars. Hill, he drops back. He's got some time. He throws downfield. The catch is, it's going to be intercepted. intercepted. Oh, ho, 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 we need to see that again. Get a replay if we can. Boy, I sure thought we had an interception out there. I'm not too sure we can get close enough to find well, out, Bob. Looks like Lamarck's going to send the punting team in. Okay, here we go. I didn't even get. Hard to tell. Looks like he got it to me. Well, if it was an NFL game, Matt Burnett would, would be taking his first challenge right now. Hey, they held. Watch for a fake. Uh-oh, uh-oh. End over end kick. It takes a favorable Indian roll. They dodged the bullet there. Good work by the PNG defense. Lamarck hits the one big pass play, and then they can't do anything more with it. Has Nathan rented that scoreboard full time? Every time I look up, I see him on there. Nathan is serious. He's everywhere. All right, Dustin Long over center. They need some working room, Bob. And on the with the run, it's not going anywhere right now. So tough to run the ball against this Lamar defense. And Jim, we probably say this every time PNG's on and, and maybe overdo it, but with Dustin Long, a guy who's only thrown five interceptions all season, you take chances in bad field position that you normally wouldn't take with high school quarterbacks. 11-18, clock moving, second quarter. Indians lead 7-0. Lone setback is Bergeron. Will he, pick the, will he pop the big one tonight? He's had a great playoff run. Dustin with a lot of time, throwing down, feel the cow. Oh, ho, ho. In and out of the hands of Baxter, but he was defended pretty well on the play by Ronnie Johnson. I guarantee you, Johnson was in perfect position, and it was, it was almost a perfect throw. I'll tell you what, I'm finding this out. The offensive line is doing a wonderful job of blocking for Dustin, as they always do, but those defensive backs are, they're going to get tested for Lamarck tonight. We're going to well, find out how good they are. Lamarck is keeping a lot of people in coverage too, Jim. They blitzed the one time, but they are keeping a lot of people in their secondary and trying to rely on their front people to get the pass rush. We'll see if they're able to stick with that. Well, their front people are stopping the run right now. Now the Indians with four receivers. Pressure. Dustin breaks loose. He's going to get a first down on his own. How about that? Well, we talk about this guy every week. He just continues to do great things. That's his mobility. He breaks out of the tackle, brings it up for a what is really a big, big first down because now the Indians don't have to punt out of their own end zone. Here's another look at it here. I thought he was going down, Jim. Here come the pressure. It pays to have some quickness as well. He's, yes, he's run for nearly 500 yards this year. Lamarck's front people doing a little bit of looping, creating a little bit of confusion, but uh, Dustin Long countered that. Bob, we're passing the ball well, but we've got to get a run here or there. We've got to. Here's Dustin. He's going he's gonna to keep it. Give him about seven on his own. He is a complete football player. 
Yes, he is, and that's uh, one of the reasons that so many uh, Division I programs like him. Uh, he, he's mobile, he's got the rocket arm, he can run the football. Well, well there's a school in Texas, I'm told, that, that liked the Jacksonville quarterback over him, and it just, <laughs> okay. uh, it just blows me away. I'm not going to name anybody tonight. No. May do it in the newspaper one of these days, but I don't see how you could take that kid over Dustin. Well, 10-17. Clock moving. Looking downfield, the catch is going to be made by Baxter. 49-yard line. Justin Baxter over the middle, and he is having a huge night tonight. Well, the last time that the Lamar Cougars faced a great passing team, it was Stephenville, Bob West. They got to be 34 to 7, didn't they? Yeah. I'm not suggesting this is going to be no. like that, but there it is again. What everything Baxter gets his hands on, he catches. Let's go down to Harold Mann on the sideline. Offensive coordinator Mike Long before the game, he told me one key for tonight was the accuracy of his son, quarterback Dustin Long. He said that's going to play a major role in this football game. He also talked about the fact that, yeah, we're here to pass, but we need to run to keep them honest and get a good look at their secondary. Right now, things are looking pretty good for that Indian offense. Well, Harold Mann doing a great job on the sideline, as he always does. What a credit to our team. And, and uh, Mike Long up in the box uh, doing a great job of picking apart Lamarck's coverages. Of course, uh, his son is, is executing it. But Lamarck is going to reach a point here where they're going to have to change up some things they're doing. They cannot continue to rush four if they can't get to Dustin Long because he's going to burn them. He, he has burned them. They're trying to cover Baxter one-on-one -on -one and not getting it done. Well, many thanks to CNI Computers. They're in the regional square on 365, and they are the, the today's computer business center. At CNI Computers, also Bob West, Sonic Drive-In on Magnolia. They got the cue from Sonic Drive-In on Needland Avenue. How about that? All right. We'll take them. First down Indians, 49-yard line. Here's little Jeff Bergeron playing Bob West with a broken nose he received in the game last week. In fact, he played three quarters of that game last week with a broken nose. That's a tough young man. He's a tough kid, yeah. He's a good little football player. Yardage continues to be tough between the tackles for the Indians. About all they've had success with is, uh, is Dustin Long on the option, keeping the football. And, of course, Dustin Long throwing the ball. And we're back to another throwing down. Well, we have 9.35 to play opening half. Ryan Norton, a receiver near side. Joey Price comes over with him. Play action for Dustin. Swings it to little Jeff Bergeron. Oh, great nifty move. First down, Indians. Excellent cut by Bergeron. It gets the first down when the... Looked like, well, we say the first down, maybe not, but he turned it up and got about three extra yards. And again, Long making a good hot read. There was some pressure. I'll tell you what, that's going to be close enough to measure. They're going to bring the change in while they do. Thank you very much to Victoria's Closet, Kathy Pressler, who happens to be Ryan Norton's aunt. Seems like everybody's interconnected, got, Bob West. Got a lot of relatives <laughs> supporting their youngsters. I've got one for you as they do the spot before we go back to live action. Be short. Short by about the length of a football. I had a lady call, her name was Miss Smith. She called up at the paper and talked to Tom for a moment. Then Tom gave her my number. She said, uh, my son's got a plumbing company. It's called Groves Plumbing. She said, he needs to be on your program. I want to sponsor that business, and I want him on your program. And his name is Max Smith. She said he play, he's from the class of 1976. His company needs to be on the Friday Night Experience. I said, we'll take him. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> this is fun. It really is. Uh, we're building up a following, Jim. I think it's going to be much easier next year, and we're going to start selling <coughs> the Friday Night Experience pretty soon after this season ends, getting our commitments. We want to have everything uh, set up as much as we can early before the, the 2000 football season. Well, a split backfield. 
and Dustin will have a first down. That offensive line, Bob, is firing off the ball in a hurry. Well, it's, it's just simple, straight ahead, base type block. And it's the best play to call in that situation, as we mentioned earlier. Jim, this has been a, a very impressive drive from the 10 yard line. If the Indians can take this one and put it in the end zone, Lamarck is going to experience a little feeling like they haven't had before this year. 8.49 to play second quarter. Here's Dustin, the two-step. He gets the ball over to Ryan Norton. Ryan Norton, a first down Indians. Let's hit that one again because somebody blew a coverage. Ryan Norton was standing there like the first guy out to practice. Bob, I don't really, I don't think they realize right now what's going to hit them. The Indians come from too many different angles. Watch this now. They just, uh, the, well, we, I don't know if we're going to get the, the defensive backs in the picture, but they just run off and leave. Look, there's 34 is the closest guy. He's five yards away. Impressive. Need to maximize the opportunity, yeah. Jim. Get but they are controlling time of possession, which is a key too, Bob. No question. Here's Dustin. Swings it out again. The catch is made by Jonathan Lonely at the 20-yard line. Give him three. Short gain, but on first down, not bad. Bob Portnach is towing. Uh, the, the, the owners over there are Forrest and Wayne Barber, and they said that they are longtime supporters of the Friday night experience. They said they've watched us from the beginning, and we appreciate them stepping aboard this week. Getting lots of new folks, Jim, and uh, they don't, we really do appreciate that because some others have carried the burden all year. Now we're getting a lot more help. Second down seven, the sweep, here's Wortham. Wortham, short gain of two. That'll set up third down. You know, as explosive as these backs have been this year, you know, you're expecting them to pop one, but it's hard to get through that hole right now. Well, they have not played against a defense that is as big and quick as this Lamarck defense. This is an outstanding defense, but the great, the great neutralizer thus far has been the ability of Long, the receivers, and the offensive line to take care of Long. Bob, Another, remember this drive started at the 10-yard line. Third down five, they'll pass. Oh man, Wortham would love to have that because he would have had a first down. Hey, the calls are, the, the, Mike Long is making great calls. Every, everything that they come up with seems to be there. And you know what, I like this call right here. They're gonna try to kick a field goal. Oh, absolutely, you take uh, points any way you can get them. Yeah. Especially on a drive like this, you don't want to come up empty. but. They took, what, maybe four and a half minutes yeah. off the clock. And if this can end in points, this is a terrific. Well, I was watching prior to the game, and Joy Price from this area right here was like clockwork in practice. We'll see if it converts over into a game. High snap. Kick has got the distance. And he's perfect. All right. How about that? Hey, they got some pressure, Jim. I was, oh, there's a flag. There's you know a flag. what? It's a flag. It's going to be offsides. I guess the mark, you, you take the points, or do you? It's dangerous to take points off the board. It just depends. It, is, is, it a, is it an offsides or is it a roughing the kicker pin? Let's see. Well, we're going to see the kick again. I, I looked up to follow the ball. Let's see if they hit the kicker late. Oop. Can't tell. If it's a first down, then you, you go ahead and try to make a touchdown. If it's not a first down, boy, then you got a tough call. Yeah. There's a sort of a coaching rule of thumb. Don't take points off the board. Yeah. But if you get a first down inside the 10 yard or inside the 15 yard line, this is a tough call here. It's not as obvious as it seems. Well, let's go down to Harold Man. He's got something to say. The discussion down here right now is that a five yard running into the kicker or 15-yard roughing to kicker, whether or not it'd be a first down or not. That's what uh, Coach Matt Burnett is talking to the referee about right now. Another question is, the field goal was good. They're always the old cliche. Do you take points <laughs> off the board? Take the first down if that's the case. We're going to wait and see what happens here in the next couple of minutes. 
it shows you that Harold and us, we're on the same page. Well, we got one coach on the hash marks on one side. The other, we got two Lamarck coaches. Now Larry Walker is clear out past the hash marks. I think what PNG wants is for the officials to walk it off and say, here's where it would be if you took the penalty so they could see you know, how close to a first down it might be. Well, Bob, you've got Dustin Long going out on the field right now. Based on they've already had the discussion with the PNG coaches, I assume that's going to be a first down. Jim, looking at the down box, I don't, I don't believe five yards gets a first down. I think it comes up a half a yard short. And they declined it, took okay. the field goal. Yeah, it would have been five yards. You're right. I'm glad they took the points. And, uh, you know, that's a call you can second guess, but I wouldn't second guess it. I, nope. I, the sure three gives them a two-score lead. You take the ball from your own 10-yard line. You come down and get points. Sure, you could, you, you could probably make it, but what if you didn't? Well, many thanks to King's Pharmacy, Larry Plunk. How about Drago Supply, Bob West? Philip Drago Jr. says hello to his daughter, Elena, as she's a sophomore band member on this wonderful PNG band. We do have new sponsors like Vacuum City on 9th Avenue. That's Brian McLean, the class of 89. These Indian fans and supporters, Bob West, are stepping up this week. I'm proud of them. Well, there's a lot of passion out there uh, in Mid-County right now for these Indians. There should be. This has been a terrific season. One loss to West Orange Stark, which might be one of those th things you call a yeah. good loss because I think it, the, the Indians kind of rededicated themselves after that loss, and they've just gotten better every week, and uh, it seems to have carried over to tonight. They've Bob, really I'm sure well. you've eaten at Ely's Restaurant over in Groves. Very recently, as a matter of fact. In fact, J.L. Lee, this is a mid-county tradition, and they've stepped up this week as well. Well, let's see what they do on the kickoff, Jim. They squibbed it down last time. They, don't must, want it. Yeah, they must be fearful, Bob West, of some speed. They're going to kick it low again. Need that containment. Oh, yeah. It's working out well so well far. Well done. Yeah, there, there, uh, there's a lot of thought that's gone into everything that Port Nature's Groves has done tonight. Don't want to let Lamarck wipe out all your work with one big play. Bob, you had an opportunity to uh, get to know Larry Walker, the coach of Lamarck High School, and I'll say this. What a step from Thomas Jefferson over to Lamarck. He got himself a great job. <laughs> it's a lot easier to win at Lamarck <laughs> than, than it is at uh, the TJ of the, the late 1990s. Yeah. Bob, they're going with a wishbone. Here's McKenzie up near the 30-yard line. I knew that they'd give us that look in the right. game. That's our first look at that wishbone. And it looks like now they've decided they just feel like they've got to come out and establish something, quit the grab bag, throw, run, throw, run, and just try to come out and use their physical size and power and see if they can just pound it down the field. Well, we have 6.15 to play in the opening half. Staying in the wishbone. Here's a pitch. McKenzie, oh, he's fast, he's strong, too. First down, the Mark Cougars. Got to wrap up on this guy. When I saw the story that uh, Tom wrote and they started comparing this guy to Barry Sanders, I thought, whoa. Well, looking at him in his play, two weeks ago against Crosby, he had over 300 yards rushing. That says something, right? I don't care who you're playing. And two big touchdowns last week in the first half against Hallsville, yeah. longer than 60 yards. First down, Cougars. Look there out. He, boy, he is so yep. fast. Give him another 10 yards and a first down. Well, they found something they can hang their hat on right well, now. Yeah, they have. And that's if there is second thoughts on taking the field goal, you know, this team can move the football. But points again, Bob West was the key on the previous drive, especially since you started at the 10-yard line. It was, it was a tremendous drive, ate a lot of clock, and wound up with three more points on the board. Well, is this a bend but not break defense? Let's find out. 
There he is again. Ah, that's, is that Bud Wine? But he got away from him. But a big hit by number 33. That being Chris Golke. Golke's come, come tonight like he's mad. Boy, he's made some hard hits. But uh, this has got to be a concern now. They, this is just pure power. Well, the Olympiad Training and Gymnastics Center and our Arabella's gifts, Linda Morgan Allman. Appreciate your help this week along with American Real Estate, Leslie Simmons and Indianette, class of 1978. Back in the wishbone. Ah, there you go. Somebody won on the line of scrimmage, Bob. Yeah, and I think it was Budwine. number 81. I think it may have been Gary, Jared Gary. Oh, really? Uh, Got low, made the play. An unfortunate injury to Brignac, who uh, separated his shoulder, Bob West, last weekend and re aggravated it this week. A big loss for that That's defense. Tough for them to play without him. Second down, 10. There again, good job on the line of scrimmage. That's going to put the, uh, the the Cougars in a third down and long situation. That's game tackling right there. That's what I was going to say, Jim. I was pointing at the screen. About seven purple shirts on the ground that time. And uh, so Lamarck comes to a big third down now. Bob, you ever heard of Home Care Supply and Pharmacy? Jared Garrett? Yeah, and I think somebody named Jeannie West works for Home Care Supply. I believe she does. And, uh, Jared, Randy, all you folks, we're really glad to have you on the telecast this week. Third down eight. Michael Hill over center. Play action. Throwing on the run. Almost intercepted. Wonderful coverage and no flags. Now, do they punt the football? Are they going to be bold? I think they'll I think they'll punt it, Jim, because PNG has moved the ball so well. Yeah. You don't want to take a chance on giving it up out here. All right. There's McFerrin Insurance on the board with us. I'd like to think they're clapping for us and McFerrin, but I believe it's for that PNG defense. <laughs> I think and you're rightly right. so. Many thanks to Terry Schwartner and all he's done this year, Bob, Absolutely. for McFerrin Insurance. Here's a punt. It's a high one. Get end on. over end. Get in that end zone. Get in there. It's in there. All right. <laughs> Dust along, Bob West. There's a lot of time to work. 345, leading 10 to nothing. Well, what you'd like to see now, Jim, is if PNG at least keep the ball long enough to uh, run out most of the clock. You'd love to see another well, score, but uh, rather than get greedy, if they could just keep it away yeah. from Lamarck the rest of the half. I love seeing that Lamar Cougar offense on the sidelines. Well, that's what we talked about early on. Is the, the burden really is on the Indian defense tonight to keep that other off, uh, the Indian offense to keep the Lamar offense on the sidelines. Well, will the Indians try to establish their run? It's not been there so far. This time it'll be little Jeff Bergeron. Give him about five yards. Many thanks to First Baptist Church of Port Natchez. We're about you, the cherry tree on Highway 365 across from Central Wall. Esther supporting PNG football for 25 years. And the Edmonds and Bennett Law Firm, Port Arthur. Lots of new folks on here this week. You better believe it. Folks have really rallied behind the Indians and the Friday night experience. Bob, I can't say it's catching on because, hey, these PNG people have been on board. Here's Dustin Long with a first down for the Indians to the 31-yard line. Bob, the list goes on. All-state insurance, Bobby Martin Jr. and Groves, you're in good hands. Greenline Memorial Park, Glen Root. How about this name right here, B&B &B Ice, distributors of Ready Ice, Paul Benton, who that is a longtime, lifetime buddy, I believe, of Jimmy Johnson, correct? Well, uh, yeah, but I think you're talking about Paul Benton Sr. Is that right? A dear friend of mine who passed away. But isn't that his son? Yes, Jr.? that's his son. Okay. Yeah, being, yeah. But many thanks to you, Paul Benton. Ah, great pass out to Ryan Norton. They move the ball eight yards, and the clock is rolling now toward 2.30. One more first down, and PNG will have pretty much accomplished, uh, barring a turnover, something unfortunate, uh, Lamarck getting another shot here this half. Second down and two. 
And you can hear tip, Bob, on the uh, public address system here in the Dome. Seems like the Dome's turning into a home game for these Indians. Little Jeff Bergeron, but flags flying. Ah. Second and two, that'll make it second down seven. I'm still waiting on little Jeff to pop a long one, Bob. Well, even, uh, I tell you, those fours, fives, and sixes in a game like this, Jim, while you may not roll up big yardage, you keep that clock moving, you yeah. make first downs, and you keep their offense off the field. It's going to be hard to break a big one on these guys. I agree. Well, the at the 34, second and seven. Wortham and Norton on one side. Joy Price, receiver near side. Lone setback is Little Jeff. Second down and seven with 150 to play opening half. The three-step looking downfield is Dustin Long. Receiver breaking open Wortham. Oh. Almost. Almost is right. Almost a big play there. I'd like to see it again. Just to see how close it was. Here we go. Oh, Bob, it looks like he had a chance. Yeah. Just wonder if he really saw the ball because you never it was know. so close to him. Well, the Indians really need one more first down here. There's still 145, so if they had to, if they throw incomplete, Lamarck will get some time back on the clock. Well, Dustin's been very good on third down so far. Can he do it again? They go with an eye backfield. Dustin rolls, throws on the run. Uh-oh, look out. Well, in and out of the hands of Ryan Norton. The ball was slightly thrown a little bit high. Yep. And the Cougars dodge a bullet, Bob. They're going to get the ball back with 140 left, and I hate that. What I hate, Jim, is those tip balls that bounce off guys' yeah. hands and, and somebody runs by and picks it out and goes with it. And, uh, fortunately for the Indians, it fell harmlessly to the turf. Got to be careful yeah. now with the return here. One thing I feel good about, though, is the fact that the Indians are proving, Bob, they can pass the ball on this team. Here they come. Dustin Long, good, good punt. It's taken at the 30-yard line. Great coverage. Well, Run out of bounds at the 35. Lamarck committed to try to block the punt, and there was nobody back to uh, help the, the receiver. Thanks well, to... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, thanks to Southern Superior Mortgage, Juanis Horlocker over there, the PNG class of 1964. Bob, you've heard our sponsors tonight, and we certainly appreciate them. Amen these to Indians, that. These Indians win the football game. Bob, all they got to do is get a hold of us and jump back on board. We certainly want to do another game. I would think so. <laughs> we got a lot of football left. Michael Hill throwing the fade. Catch is made. Was he out of bounds? He was out of bounds. And he must have been decisively out. That was right in front of the Lamarck yeah. bench. Well thrown ball. You know, if they keep passing and they fail, Bob, Dustin Long will have another chance. He would if he throw three straight incomplete passes. I worry, I worry about the draw play, but they don't have the, they only have their fullback back now, and then they go, they're going with four receivers. Here comes the pressure. Catch is made. First down, Lamar Cougars at the 48-yard line. Cardell Collins. Jim, this, this last 120 is so important. PNG has played an almost perfect game, has dominated the game. You don't want anything to happen here yeah. in the last minute to excite Lamarck to make them feel like they're back in the game. After all, they'll get the football to start the second half. Here comes a blitz. Picked up well, though. Pressure thrown downfield. The catch is made. Boy, they're hitting them. I'll say this for the end of defense. They're making the hits. But the, right now, another first down for the Lamarck Cougars. That's Golke again on the hit. Bob, keep them out of the end zone. Keep them out of the end zone. Plenty of time, though, Jim. 109. Need a sack or an interception here. Keep them out of the end zone. Screen pass. Defended well. How about that? Super play for the Indians by Raymond, Raymond Malonson. Let's see what Harrell has to say down on the sideline. 
the, as you know, guys, uh, the Cougars only have one timeout left. They spent two earlier, We're winding down to the last 37 seconds and a half. Tell you what, the PNG end at this point, the defense has bent a little bit, but they haven't broken. Let's hold on here for another half minute. Just tackle him on the field. Don't let him get out of bounds. That's, is that Lang? Number 34, wasn't it? I think it was 21, Sean 21, Lang. 21, okay. To the, that, and I think Lamarck just burned their last time out. That's why that play by Sean. Okay, we're going to see it again. Make sure it was Sean Lang. You cannot let the guy get to the sidelines. Right there, Lang comes up, keeps him inbounds, forces him to use their last time out. And there's Rick's Auto Body Excellence, the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience Player of the Game sponsor. And I'll tell you what, I hope we have good news at the end of this game. Well, Lamarck now in a, in a little more difficult position with no timeouts left, third and long, 21 seconds to play. Any play that is stopped on the field unless it's a first down is going to eat up a lot of the remaining 21 seconds. I need to tip the hat to my broadcast partner here, okay? I want these PNG fans to hear this and remember this. Bob West flew in. He was on the Lamar basketball trip this week. Flew in at 5.52 or 6 o'clock over at Hobby Airport. He scheduled his flight so he could be here and do this game. Hey, both Bob West and the Port Arthur News is committed to the PNG Indians. Probably the only fan here that was in Las, Las Vegas a few hours ago. There Jim. you go. Third down, 13. Hill's got time. Bat it down. Number 80, Bob. Number 80. Is that C.J. Blyer? C.J. Blyer. And uh, <coughs> Lamarck will probably go here on fourth down. Might as well. And the thing is, if they do and throw incomplete, Long might have a chance to make one completion and go for a long field goal. Let's, but let's just get them stopped. Well, the Indians have all timeouts, Bob. They have three. <clears throat> all right, give them anything short. Yeah, well, they bring the pressure. They're going with four receivers right now. Oh, that's a takedown. Uh-oh, there's going to be interference. Oh, Maybe interference. Wow. I'll tell you what, there was a takedown on the line. There's no flags well, there. Well, that's unfortunate. That's going to give them a fresh set of downs. Oh, that, uh, Let's get a replay on that and see what happened. I don't know what it, but there's no I want to see the blocking on the offensive line. There was a takedown, Bob. Here All we right. go. I think you're Look at number, number 77. 77. Yeah, he wrestled him down. Well, we got there a little bit after the contact. Let's take one more look at it. Where was the flag there? That's what I want to see. Here we go. Watch number 77. Uh, we couldn't pick it up. Well, that's going to be 15 yards from the 38, which will take them down to about the 23. <laughs> and I'm not sure it was a catchable ball. It looked like it was well overthrown, but uh, no question there was a... Hard contact. Well, it only takes right to 10 yard penalty, takes it to the 27. Here's your, your play at the yeah. top of the screen 77 just wrestles. That ball could have never been yeah. caught. Well, there's only 12 seconds. They need to go to the end zone, Bob. It's time for two plays. The Cougars have no timeouts. Looking for the end zone. Out of bounds, out of oh, bounds, out of bounds. Ooh. Woo. I could see it from here, out of bounds. You made a better call than I did. I thought he was going to get it. You could see it happening over there. He had a step. Got to see that again if we can. And that was Nehemiah Glover, the intended receiver. Here we go. Michael Hill made a great pass. Out oh, of bounds. Yeah, clearly out of bounds. Your eyes are better than mine, Jim. Why wear glasses if you don't? <laughs> All right, hey, they're going to try a field goal. 33, 43 yards. It's up. It's going to be wide. Wide left. 
How about the first half of the Indians, although we have one second left? Yeah, but I, I think we're safe in saying the Indians are going to lead 10 to nothing at the half. I'd say they are. Dustin Long is going to take a knee, a tremendous half of football, both sides of the ball by the Port Nature's Rose Indians, but there's a long way to go. Jim. There's a long way to go, but do you realize the Lamar Cougars could be even farther behind? Could be. Could be 14 nothing. but uh, we'll, I, I think anybody – Associated with PNG is happy with this 10 0 score because Lamarck close to getting one there at the end of the half. <laughs> and Dustin go down to one knee. Well, the Indians, let's listen to the fans because they're happy. Bob, a great first half. Total yards for the Indians, 172. The Cougars, 129. First down, 10 for the Indians and 7 for the Cougars. But more important than any of that, the Indians lead 10 to nothing. And now, Jim, of course, the coaches are going to go in. They're going to make some adjustments at halftime. The one adjustment I want to see is Lamarck's approach to defending the PNG passing game. They're not getting to Dustin Long. He is on the money. There have been a couple of other opportunities for completions and big plays that didn't come off. But Lamarck has got to change something in their defensive scheme to, to get more pressure on Dustin Long. Okay, how important will that first drive be for Lamarck? Because they're going to go in, talk about it at halftime, and when they come out, you know they're, they're going to have something up their sleeve. It's going to be important for the Indians to stop them on that first possession, well, I think. First drive in a tight, big game is always important in the second half. Uh, you know, it's not the game, but certainly if Lamarck takes it down and scores, big lift for them. PNG stops them and maybe comes back and scores on their own and gets up 17 nothing. Then it's a tremendous swing the other way. This is everything I thought it would be, Jim. One reason.
Great Outdoors Tours is P&G proud. Come see our new buses and take a winning trip to anywhere you want to go. Window shades, fall-away armrests, stereo, and six TVs are a few of the new features. Charter our coaches and plan your own trip or ride with us in style on an escorted tour. From Disney World to Disneyland, coast to coast, we have the best time. We've been making friends and sharing vacations for over 20 years. Call for information or a tour book. See us in the Golden Triangle Yellow Pages. Start with us. Lamar State College, Port Arthur. Start with us. Because there's so much we offer. We'll help you find a great career. Your future starts right here. Go with the best. When you want success, a great place. Lamar State College, Port Arthur. When Cooper Tire asked me to be their spokesman, I wanted to make sure it was a good match. So I took a tour of one of their factories. I found out that Cooper's been around since 1914, a time of grassroots values that still drive the company today. Hard-working folks dedicated to their craft. My kind of people, always striving to be the best. What better match? Cooper Tire. Drive on. Park Place Medical Center's emergency room is closest to my home. Good thing, too. Doctors didn't miss a beat when they diagnosed Wayman Hallmark's heart attack. That quick response made the difference. He can't say enough about the staff. It seemed like his recovery was their number one priority. The Take Charge program taught him how good nutrition and exercise can help keep your heart healthy. Park Place Medical Center is giving hearts a second chance. And I'm living proof.
To celebrate the Indians' free trips to the Astrodome this season, the Indian has forming three goals on the field. Tradition that began in the 70s. Thank 
The Museum of the Gulf Coast in Port Arthur, Texas captures the ebb and flow of the Gulf. From gators to gutsy explorers, and from the Spindletop Gusher to outer space. From our lighthouse overlook, view a magnificent mural that captures prehistoric and historic venues. Also, browse exhibits of those who from the area have made an international impact on our modern world, such as rocker Janis Joplin, coach Jimmy Johnson, and famed artist Robert Rauschenberg. Museum of the Gulf Coast, open Monday through Sunday. Bud Wilkinson, the legendary coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, once said about football, football is 22 men on a field desperately in need of rest and thousands of people in the stands desperately in need of exercise. You know, the same is true about church life today. There are a lot of folks wanting to sit in the stands and not get involved in the game. I want to encourage you to become a part of a church family somewhere and get involved in the living of life today to its fullest. Arthur News Friday night experience and our halftime score. The Indians 10 and the Lamar Cougars nothing. Bob West, you have some quick stats to pass along. Everything favorable for the Indians. 10 first downs to 7. Uh, Lamar Edge and rushing 60 to 51. P&G 121 passing yards to 59. That's 172 total for the Indians. 119 for Lamar. We'll do some individuals in a minute. Well, here's the approach by Joey Price. This time he'll kick it deep, but it'll bound. That could work. Ah, oh, that's a good play. <laughs> PNG couldn't have drawn it up any better. Jim, the first half, McKenzie, 12 carries for 60 yards, but none of them, none of the big plays that you really fear. Glover, three receptions for 29. PNG rushing leader Dustin Long, seven for 34. Long, 11, 16 of 0 for 121. Justin Baxter, four catches for 63. Jim, they've tried to cover Baxter with a linebacker and haven't been able to do it. We'll see what kind of adjustment they make. Well, Michael Hill, he'll lead the controls here for the Lamar Cougars. In motion, Nehemiah Glover. The one step, they flare it out to Glover. They're going to try to isolate him one-on-one. -on -one. Not a bad play. Good start for Lamarck. This is a really key possession for Lamarck. Well, a key possession for both teams, obviously. But uh, Lamarck needs to get something done with their offense. A high-powered offense like this, no points on the board. Again, total yards, the Indians, 172. The Cougars, 137. 11.28 to play third quarter. We're just underway, as Bob alluded to. This is a big possession here for the Lamar Cougars. Second down, two. A freeing, matter of fact, that's going to be. <laughs> Look out, there may be a flag. Is there a late this. flag? Yeah, there is. There's a late flag, I do believe. We'll see. Front of the Lamarck bench, that's, I'm going to be surprised if something doesn't go down over there. And these guys are plenty. Of, let's see. Okay, we're going to. Personal foul against PNG. Tack on 15 yards on the end, Bob. That's not a way to start the no, second half. Don't give these people anything because they are so capable of uh, hitting you with a big, quick strike. Well, McKenzie's going to be the man of the second half, Bob West. Over 1,600 yards coming in. 
He's been their man all year long. They're going to go to him in the second half. Jim, I really thought they might come back out in the wishbone. They had some success with that, but uh, nothing doing yet. Well, Michael Hill puts one receiver in motion going far side. This time it's McKenzie. Oh, he's tough. Give him about eight yards on the carry down to the 42-yard line. Bob, a defense that bent a little bit in that first half. They did not break. I certainly hope it applies here as well. Yep, a couple times looked like Lamarck was ready to move it on in, and the Indians rose up. Hate to see those eight and nine-yard plays on first down. You know, you've got to come out with the same intensity that you had going into halftime. A big drive here to start the second half. The Lamarck fans, they want something to cheer about. The fullback, a first down, breaking tackles. Bob, oh, they're coming out. Not down yet. Yeah. They couldn't get him off his feet. I'm, Lamar surpri I'm surprised the whistle didn't blow. Jim, we're looking at a big momentum deal right now. Lamarck is so fired up right now. Bob, they want to make a statement. They want to say there's, there's a reason why we have been in six straight state championship games. We won three of them. That's absolutely right. They're yeah. going to come out. They've got a lot of pride. They've got character, and they're going to fight here in the second half. It's an outstanding football team, and you know that they're going to give you your best shot. Michael Hill over center. They go with an I formation, three receivers. There's a good stop right there. How about that? Cody Clark in there for the Indians, and uh, that gets the PNG fans back into it. This is such an important drive. We just can't stress it enough. Okay, we're going to see the defensive play again. Power off right tackle. And Cody Clark there to clean it up. Well, 9.35 to play in the third quarter. There's a timeout, an official's timeout. There's a free football out on the field. All right, second down eight. Let's go defense. Hill gets under the center. There's the sweep. Not going anywhere. Once again, the Indian defense strings out a wide play. And that's Cody Clark. Cody Clark. I think also Thomas, Thomas Baxter up there from the Yeah, Thomas Baxter is one of those assisting on the play. Big third down coming up, Bob. Four down territory for the Cougars unless they don't want to take three points, providing they don't make it on this third down. Well, I suspect if they didn't make it and they had over three or four yards, they would probably try to get to three. They're two scores behind, yeah. and they need to get on the board. Third down eight. The crowd chanting defense. There's a give. Do they have the containment to the outside? Yes, they do. Oh, what a great play. Got to see that one again. I believe that's Jeremy Neeb. That play was close to breaking. Tremendous open field tackle, and I believe it's Jeremy Neeb, but let's make sure they're, they're congratulating him right now. And here we go. Okay, There's a replay we're right here. see it here as the field goal team comes in. Watch this play. This is a, it's a great individual play by Jeremy Neeb. There he pops outside. Looks like something there might you go. be happening. Great form tackle, Jeremy Neeb. All right, a field goal attempt of 34 yards. It's up. It is no good. What a lift for the Indians. What a lift for the Indians. They took Lamarck's best shot and repelled it. And now, Jim, if uh, the Indians could take it down and put it in the end zone, well, Mark would be in big trouble because that's easy for us to say. Yeah. We're not down there battling those big guys. All right. First down Indians, 20-yard line. They're going to try to run the football, and they have yet oh, to do ball, so. Oh, ball. Oh, oh, man. Could and this I be a momentum them. changer? I believe, I believe the Indians have recovered their fumble, and that is a big re Ooh. fumble recovery. Oh. A loss of two on All the right. play. All right, going to get another look at it, I think. Man. There is just 
it, you just can't run the ball against yeah. these guys. The only thing that's really worked is Dustin Long with some option plays, turning him up. All right, second down, 12. Dustin with three receivers, two on one side, one on the other. A split backfield. They're coming. Straight drop. Looking downfield, the catch is going to be made. Ryan Norton at the 35-yard line. Great concentration by Ryan Norton. You're going to see the ball tipped by number 34 of Lamarck. They hit. He tipped it. Norton kept focused on the football and a big play for the Indians. And we, I'd said going out of the half, Lamarck needed to do something to get pressure. They came heavy that time. All right, here's Dustin Long. He's got two receivers on one side, two receivers near side. Looking down, Phil catch is made. 46 yard line. Justin Baxter is having an incredible game catching the football, Jim. Let's see that one again. He's down, I believe he's Long had always, oh, as he sprained an ankle, that is not a good sign they need him. What a catch. Baxter limping off. I think he's going to be all right. Lamarck is getting more pressure. No I bet he'll be back, him. Bob. He'll be back. Well, we have 6.45 to play in the third quarter. Indians with 198 total yards. The Cougars 177. The Indians 12 first downs. The Cougars 10. And most important, the Indians lead 10 to nothing. They like. go twins formation near side, Bob. One receiver far side, lone setback. Here's Long. He's going to keep it. That's been the most productive running tonight. It's been a little option right around the right side. I think we're going to see PNG sometime in this half. I'm not sure when. Catch Lamarck blitzing and, and hit a screen pass and turn it into a big play. Well, the clock is at 6.05, third quarter. Again, Indians lead the ball game 10 to nothing. One thing about that Lamarck first drive, Jim, it took a lot of time off the clock and they didn't get any points out of it. Well, you've got Jonathan Lumley, a receiver on the far side, along with Ryan Norton. It'll be Lumley in motion coming near side. Straight drop for Dustin. Here comes the pressure. The ball's going to be out to Wortham. Wortham to the 49-yard line. And that'll bring up a third down and call it five for the Indians. 34, I'll say this for the Lamarck defense, it's tough. Those guys are tough on the line of scrimmage, and when they've got somebody wrapped up, they don't break away. Now, these are great athletes, though, and there's a tremendous program from the lower levels up over in Lamarck that is, is run for a decade now. I mean, this is, a, this is a winner's program over there. Third down five, Dustin Long. See if they come. This time, Dustin comes near side, throws it out of the backfield. There's little Jeff Bergeron. They cut him he's, off, though. Yeah, he's going to be a yard short of a first down. And the PNG fans want a whistle. I mean, they want a flag because the play continued well past the whistle. They drove Bergeron back eight yards. Okay, fourth down, and you've got one. How bold do you want to be? Well, it's tempting, Jim. I, I know it's got to be tempting for Matt Burnett. I think they're going for it thinking, boy, if we could pick this one up, get in there going. And uh, I like it. This is one of those where the old coach gets hung out to drive. He doesn't make it, and he's a genius if he does make it. And they've used Dustin Long on the sneak for these kind of plays tonight. You think they'll try to draw him off sides, or are they going to run the play? They're going to the run the play. There's a first down, Dustin Long. That'll take the wind out of the cell to some of those Lamarck fans. I guarantee you Matt Burnett did not want the ball back in Lamarck's hands. And it's a fresh set of downs. The Indians continue to move. The clock will go under four minutes in the third quarter before the ball is snapped again. Bob, I understand we're having a big night on TSRNSports.com. That's what Lynn Michael said. I just did halftime with him. And, uh, he's finding out about Southeast Texas and the PNG folks, as if he didn't already know. This game being heard around the United States and literally around the world on TSRNSports.com. Here's Dustin. Downfield, the catch is made. First down, Indian. And that is Justin Baxter back in the ball game. 
Justin Back, this is the best game I've seen Justin Baxter have. He has been incredible tonight. Well, Justin Baxter coming into the football game, 33 catches, and he said several tonight. And let's see. I want to see if they're still trying to cover him with a linebacker. Boy, the, these Indian fans are about to erupt. Seven here would be awesome, Jim. I'm telling you, it would put Lamarck on the brink. Here's Dustin over center. He'll keep it. Oh, they're tough. Down to the 20-yard line. Give him about three or four on the carry. That's a four-yard gain. That's a great first down play against their defense. Also, Dennis, uh, Chris Mickens. Mickens on the play for the Cougars. All spots at the 21 yard line. Just a really impressive performance on both sides of the football up to this point for the Indians, Jim. All right, Joey Price, receiver far side. It's Baxter, receiver near side. Dustin. They're, they're coming. Well, There's a handoff. Bo Wortham. Bo Wortham flags down on the far side. <laughs> going to be motion on the Indians. Bo Wortham on the carry. Matt Howard defensively. I believe we probably got Harold Mann standing by. I don't see him yet, but I know he's down there. I think he wants more time. All right. This would make a great screen down, Jim. I really look for Lamarck to come, second and 12. I believe they're going to come with some heat now. Well, they've got four down linemen, three linebackers. Here they come on the blitz. Here's Dustin. Oh, in and out of the hands of Wortham at the 15-yard line. A little behind him. Yeah. A little bit behind him. He was popped at the time as well. Well, there's Nathan Dickerson out there again. He's everywhere. Really quiet over on the far side of the field, Jim. I think the Lamarck fans are a little bit stunned. They're, there's still plenty of time. Their team very much in the game, but they're not used to looking up and seeing a big old zero up on the scoreboard by Lamarck this late. In any football Bob, third down and long. They need to get some of this back. Yes, get in field goal range yeah. anyway. Here's Dustin. They bring the pressure. Looking downfield on the fade route. Were them out there. Inter almost intercepted at the goal line. There's a flag down. Could it be holding? It's probably in the holding area. And if it is, then that will take them out of field goal range. If Lamarck takes it, you wonder what the, the Lamarck decision would be here. I'm not too sure they're going to take it when they talk about it. Well, I think they'd be making a mistake not to take it. Almost intercepted that time. I, I think if you didn't take yeah. it, uh, fourth and 12 is a whole lot easier to get than uh, third and 22. So the Indians definitely out of field goal range Ball now. Ball at the 36 yard line and uh, beat third down. Okay, third down 22 uh, with 216 to play in the third quarter. Indians would love to have a first down. They'd love to get in field goal range right now. Here's Blitz. Dustin. Here they come. Picked up well. Here's the pass downfield. It's going to be caught. Justin Baxter touchdown. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful throw. Great catch. And let's give one of the PNG backs credit now. I don't know whether it's Wortham or, uh, or Bergeron, but there was a blitz. Watch the quarterback and watch the protection. And I still can't tell whether it's Wortham or Bergeron. There's the pass right there. <laughs> Number 21 is having a long night. That's a linebacker. They've been trying to cover back for them all night, and they've lost all night. And Joey Price on for the extra point attempt. It's going to be blocked. They better get on it. There's a fumble. You just get on the ball. That's okay. 
Jim, I really don't understand what's going on defensively for Lamarck. Well, let's see if Harold's going to come out. Question on the play. Touchdown from Dustin Long to Dustin Baxter. The I want to see that uh, touchdown play and again if we can. The see the touchdown play again. I, I still hadn't figured out whether it was Bergeron or uh, Wortham doing a great job picking up the blitzer. Here we go. Can you tell? That's Bergeron. I do believe. But look at this. you got a linebacker covering Baxter. Baxter has beat him like a dog all night. Okay, let's go down to Harold Mann on the sideline. Okay, we're going to try Harold one more time down on the sideline. Jim and Bob talking to head coach Matt Burnett at halftime. I asked him about adjustments. He said, yeah, they need to make a few. Offensively, he's really happy. He's happy with what's happening. He said they need to cut down on the procedure penalties. They had one in that particular drive. Defensively, he said, we've got to stop their option. We've got to stop their run. Short kick again. You need good special teams play. It's there. Kept them short of the 30-yard line again. I'm telling you, everything that the PNG coaches have drawn up has been executed to almost perfection. It's almost scary. Bob, unfortunately, there's a lot of time left. Well, there is. Four to play in the third. As long as you don't let Lamarck make the big play, though, Jim, it's good. Uh, they got to score three times. So far, Bob, hats off to the PNG defense. To everybody, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Offense, defense, coaching staff, been an awesome effort. Michael Hill will pass the football. He's looking downfield. Look out. Great coverage, Jeremy, Jeremy Neeb. Neeb. They wanted to go deep. They wanted to try to make a big strike. Jeremy Neeb's had a heck of a night. He had that great tackle on the big third down play on the last drive. Okay, the quarterback winds up and lets her fly. Neeb gets a hand in there. Well, second down 10 coming up for the Lamar Cougars. Nehemiah Glover, one of those receivers for the Cougars. They go in an eye. Here's Hill. Here comes the pressure. Throws on the run. Catches May. Oh, in it. Run. Incomplete. <laughs> That's Golke again, I believe. Let's get a replay on that because that ball was catchable. And Golke just came up and laid the leather. Right there. Wow. Golke has been hitting from the moment the first whistle blew tonight. Well, Bob, defensively, he is certainly one of those considerations for the Rick's Auto Body Excellence player of the game. He certainly is, Jim. But I'm going to tell you right now, if this game ends this way, of course, you could almost the make it a defense. defense. But I, I think Baxter's had a tremendous yeah, game, I'm too. I'm with you. That's... I'm with you. Here's a straight drop. Draw play. Not going anywhere. Trace Budwine, and listen to these fans on the PNG side of the field. They're seeing their team play one outstanding football game. Bob, uh, the Indians score on this drive, the official knockout punch. Even Although it, Matt Burnett would never say that. Uh, I just want to see him move <laughs> the chains, take some time off the clock. Don't give Lamarck anything easy. 
Fair catch call for by Neve at the 42-yard line. Bob, I've got to mention sponsors in this second half once again, and we've got a bunch of them to roll through. Go get them. Hey, we've got time. We'll do it. Because it looks like we're going to be needing them again next week. And I'll tell you what, if we win this ball game, you can call Bob at the paper or you can call me at 838-9738. It's as simple as that, correct? As far as I know it is. I'll be glad to shuttle them <coughs> off to you, or they can just go to you direct. That'll work. 838-9738. First and foremost, let's win this football game. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Superior Tire and Service, Bob, a season-long sponsor. Also, Powerhouse Services, Pat Parrish and Jackie Williams. They've been very supportive in these playoffs for all of the local teams, and they look forward to being aboard next year. Also, the Mid-County Teachers Credit Union, Gwenda Scroggs, the Lamar State College of Port Arthur, been and on every game. Every one. People like Museum of the Gulf Coast has been on as well. McFerrin Insurance, Terry Schwartner, and I've mentioned Rick's Auto Body Excellence, our player of the game sponsor. He's been there all year long. And it, you know, it's become a real popular thing to do, and we appreciate everybody jumping on, but we really appreciate the guys that said back in August, hey, we'll be with you for the whole year. And that's what enabled us to get the ball rolling. And Bob, come January, we start our sales package for the next school year. I'll tell you what, they need to jump on board early again. Some of these people that would love to jump aboard, it's their opportunity. Here's Dustin Long. He's got time. Look out. Oh, he was defended yep. well. Yep, great coverage that time. Thought the free safety might come over and get that, but Dustin overthrew everybody. Bob, thanks to Dickerson's Exxon, Nathan Dickerson, the Mid-Jefferson County Hospital, Fitness and Sports Medicine Institute of Southeast Texas. Butch Troy, many thanks to him. Former PNG coach, got back in Southeast Texas, lives up at Wildwood now, wanted to be a part of this, really pushed for it. And we appreciate Butch doing that. And the local market basket stores. Chuck Barbie, thanks for your assistance. As always, split backfield for Dustin. Three receivers. This time the draw play. There's Bergeron, nowhere Just, to go. I mean, the Lamarck defense will not allow anything running the ball. That's that well, Pat Howard again. You know, holes that have been there in the playoffs and all year long, not there tonight running the football. Many thanks to Brett Smith over at Smitty's All, Cl All Cloth Car Wash and Quick Lube along with C.A. Turner Construction, Jim McVeigh. How about Tate & Company Collision Repair, Trent Phelps. The backfield remains split. Third down, 11. Down to 24 seconds to play in the quarter. Dustin threads a needle. He threads a needle at the 45-yard line and a first down to Ryan Norton. Let's give Norton some credit, too. He took a shot and held on to the football. And our replay guys, boy, our replay people have been super tonight. Why don't you give credit to one of our <laughs> replay guy tonight, okay? I, I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to let you give that Yellow Jacket credit. Well, a Yellow Jacket kicker, as a matter of fact, he was a second team all district Yellow Jacket kicker, Brian Morgan, and uh, many thanks to him. He started out as a fan, now we've got him a part of our crew members. <laughs> and I don't there think he is right there. There he is. Brian, you've done a heck of a job tonight. You're the man. And that's the end of the third <coughs> quarter, and it's all PNG up to this point, 16 to nothing. And Bob, uh, I, I do want our uh, the fans out there to realize that Two of our camera operators tonight are PNG, former PNG, former students at Port Nature's Girls High School, and I'll tell you what, uh, they are bleeding purple. <laughs> you know they are. Well, they got good reason to well, be happy and be excited. There's one up. There's Marty Simmons. Doesn't he look like he's a little bit purple right now? <laughs> there he is. See that wink? I can't wait to get Matt Lumpkin on because he gives us that traditional smile each and every week. Jim, what I can't wait to see is the tape of this telecast. Yeah. It looks so good here uh -oh. on the monitor. Where, where's the smile, Dad? <laughs> where's the smile, Dad? There he is. Yeah. There You're you doing, go. There you go. You guys are doing a great <laughs> job. This is going to be, you know, when we've had a lot of really good telecasts, but I, this one, uh, I'm anxious to see the final product. Many thanks to Greg Powell at Southern Union Gas, Bob Costello Realtors, Biff Burroughs, Triangle Chevrolet, Bob, and many thanks to them for stepping aboard this week. All right.
tonight. First down, Indians. We move to the fourth. The Indians with 281 total yards. A straight drop for Dustin. He rolls out of run the pocket. It, he can it. run, run the ball. He will. Get down now. Boy, he's tough. Down to the 20-yard line. That opened up, and Dustin Long <laughs> saw it open up. Got to see that one again. Dustin rolled out of the pocket, Bob. Then he decided to tuck and run. Look at the room. And then he doesn't do the NFL yeah. slide. He keeps going. Jim, I've seen Dustin Long play a lot of great football games, but considering the caliber of the opponent tonight, this may be the best one yeah. I've seen him play. Great players step up big in tough, big games. Baxter make that... Uh yeah, Justin Baxter, receiver on the far side. Look at the counterplay. Bergeron not well, going anywhere. They just, they're all stacked up at the mesh of the handoff. There's just nothing you can do. All right, we got Harold standing by again on the sideline. Mike, see if you can pick up Harold down there when you get an opportunity. Here's a strange twist for you guys, talking to Mike Long before the game. He tells me Dustin Long in the fifth grade was going to elementary school in League City. He played for the Lamarck Gamblers in Pee Wee football. He could be playing against some of his former teammates tonight. There you go. Dustin Long, look at the pickup block there. Ball's going to be swung over to Bo Wortham. Bo Wortham, touchdown. In. Well, did, did he get in? He yes, got he in. What is that song Don Meredith used to sing? Turn out the lights. The party's over. They are stunned on the Lamarck side of the field. I'm telling you, they are in total shock over there. Yeah, we're going to have another look at this play. <laughs> look how wide open Wortham is. Well, welcome back to the Golden Triangle, Larry Walker. I'm going to tell you what, Jim, people who really understand the X's and O's part of football watching this game understand that the P&G staff has seriously outcoached the people on the Lamarck side of the field. No way fans or butts about that. They go for two. Here's Dustin rolling. Back of the end zone. Batted up, almost caught by Joy Price, but... As we mentioned Joey Price's name, as we look at Nathan Dickerson, there he is again. Jeffrey Price, Joey Price's dad over at the Twin City Veterinary Clinic, and uh, we appreciate his support. The Hardys on Magnolia, thank you very much, as always. Bob, it's looking good for next week. Well... Jim, strange things can happen in football, but this game would have to do a complete 180 from what's happened up to this point. I mean, uh, Lamarck would have to hit some big, big plays. They're still within three touchdowns. Yeah. The PNG has played so well. I mean, th it would just have to totally come unglued, and that, that's hard to see it. See that happen with this team. They are so sound. yardage right now, Jim. 324 for the Indians, 173 for Lamarck. I wonder how long it's been since the Lamarck team was down 22 nothing or 22 points, whatever. Well, it wasn't against Texas City. No. Here's the approach by Price. This time he's going to kick it deep and look what he's done. Into the end zone, <laughs> out of the end zone. They have totally <laughs> frustrated Lamarck's return game tonight. Bob, in all phases of the game, they have frustrated that football team. Just a, a tremendous, tremendous game plan from A to Z, from Matt Burnett, Kim, Ken Cummings, Mike Long, Terry Cobb, all those guys on that PNG coaching staff. They have just done an absolutely wonderful job tonight. Many thanks to CNI Computers. They're in the uh, Regional Square Building on 365, and they are today's Computer Business Center. 
The Sonic drive-in on Magnolia. Gary over there, and Victoria's Closet, Kathy Pressler, who is Ryan Norton's aunt. Here's Hill. Here comes the pressure. Throws it at the last moment. Oh, they are a frustrated football team right now. Almost got a sack there, and uh, Lamarck now got to get back in the game doing what is not their bread and butter. They, they've thrown it decent, but I would assume that they, their passing success has come off play action and things where people were concerned about stopping the running game. Right now, the Indians know that they've got to throw the football. You just don't want to give them the big play. Don't let anybody get behind you and make an 80-yard play and get them excited. Well, the score, 22 to nothing. Indians over the Lamar Cougars. Ah, that young man is fast. He's strong. McKenzie up to the 31-yard line and a first down for the Cougars. They have contained him for the most part. Now he's going to wind up getting his 100 yards, but uh, until now, he's not really hurt him. Now, no team has used any timeouts, Bob. They both have three. Well, any chance, we may yeah. have done the turn out the lights a little too soon, but any chance for Lamarck now, they've got to score this possession. Yeah. If they don't score this possession, then we'll sing it. You'll sing it. I don't no, sing I'm it. not singing anything. <laughs> This time it's Hill. Here comes the pressure. Well, he is elusive. He'll run the football. He'll run out of bounds. And what that tells you is the coverage in the second yeah. was sound. Many thanks to Groves Plumbing on Lincoln Avenue in Groves. Max Smith, the class of 1976. Forrest and Wayne Barber over at Port Nature's Towing and Larry Plunk at King's Pharmacy. Drago Supply, Philip Drago Jr. says hello to his daughter, Elena Drago, the sophomore band member. What a performance they had at halftime. Here's Hill. Gives to his fullback, short of a first down, gain of one. That just helps burn clock, man. Well, that Indian defense just continues to dis distinguish itself out there, Jim. 9.35 left. Vacuum City over on 9th Avenue, Brian McLean. The PNG class of 1989. Ely's Restaurant in Groves, a mid county tradition. Third down, three. They're going to pass the football on third down. The catch is made. That was Thomas Baxter defending over there, Bob. And that was, uh, that was a play Lamarck had to have. They could not, they, well, there, there won't be any more punts. Yeah. Lamarck is in four down territory wherever they, they go now. All right. Again, the defense has been a little bit, but they have not broken not one time tonight. I expect this defense to tighten up. Here's Hill. He's going to throw it. Catch is made. That's Nehemiah Glover. And I'm going to tell you, there was almost a pick return for a touchdown there. Sean Lang went across so close. He read the play, just didn't get to the football. Got out of bounds. The clock will not start until the play. First down, Cougars. Here's a draw play. That's McKenzie on the carry for about five yards. The Cougars are going, they're going to have to stay in a no huddle ball. They don't really have any time at all. They've got to move the football and move it quick. They're going to huddle up, but they're not going to be there long. Because the clock continues to wind. Well, they said they're taking a little more time than they really should. Don't ask me why. High formation, two receivers. Hill rolls, throws on the run. Ah, oh, that was, ah, oh, there's going to be a flag. Uh, get, that's, let's get another look at that one if we can. I, I it's pretty about. close, pretty close. It looks like number 33 for the Indians, Chris Golke, Bob. He looks like he got a hand in. All right, here we go. More replay guys are on top of things. Plenty of time. 
That's boy, and it, I didn't see that PNG wound up with an no, interception on the play. Ball was tipped in the end. Boy, you talk about a call that would have <laughs> kept Lamarck in the game. I did not see the tip ball wind up. Thought it was really close though. The, and I guarantee Matt Burnett thinks it was really <coughs> close too. I think the defender was breaking on the football. Matt knows that that is the game right there if he get to, if that call is not made. 822, so there's still time. Well, ball at the 14 yard line. Well, 22 to nothing, our score. The Cougars in a must score situation. They're going to run it. There's McKenzie. Give him about two, maybe three. That's it. The Indians continue to do an outstanding job on McKenzie. Trace Budwine leading the charge for the Indians defensively there. We see Jeremy Davis kind of limping off. Jim, the clock is running, and, and Lamarck just doesn't seem to be rushing. I, I don't understand that. Second down, eight. Uh-oh, fumble. There's a pitch. There's a sweep to the outside. Short of a first down, down to the eight-yard line. Thomas Baxter up to make the tackle. Bob for a, a team that's been in six straight state championships, their crowd has thinned in the second half. Well, it never was as big as I thought it would be, and I would have thought they'd had most of the Texas City people with them. Third down, four. They're going to give it again. Short of a first. Oh, does he? No, I don't believe he got it. Well, the Cougars are going to be forced to go for it on fourth down. Jim, what amazes me that there is less than seven minutes. There seems to be no sense of urgency. They're, now they're going to take a timeout, I think, and talk it over. Hey, every second's precious right now. Well, it's going to be a fourth down and two, and what a big stop this would be for the Indian defense. Well, if, if the game's over, if PNG stops it. Let's listen in to the PNG crowd. Bob, a huge turnout. Look at that. Oh, but they're packed in here. And this is all the way up to the fifth level. No, there does not appear to be a huge sense of urgency from Lamarck right now. I just, uh, you know, I mean, there is enough time if things broke right that they could come back and, you know, and catch up. I think it's a long, long, long shot, but they're not playing like there's any concern here. Well, Lamarck's season certainly on the line with this yes, snap. Yes, it is. And the PNG contingent on their feet. They're going to go to a wishbone offense, Bob. You would expect some kind of just power football out of this formation. They had some success with it in the first half. Michael Hill over center. Here's Glover. He's going to he be very it. close. No, he got it. I'll make that uh, McKenzie down to the four-yard line. They'll stop the clock momentarily. Well, it's closer than I thought, but I, I, I don't know. It's first and goal. Get that clock started. Michael Hill. This time it's the pitch. Not getting in. That helps the cause. Just run that clock. Thomas oh. Baxter up there, Jim. Let's just find out right now how, how much in a hurry they are. They're walking back to the huddle, standing there. You'd think you'd have called two plays, be back up at the line of scrimmage. 
Ball on the one yard line. Quarterback sneak, got him. touchdown, the first touchdown of the game for the Lamar Cougars. <laughs> and the Indian defense kept them off the scoreboard for almost 42 minutes, and that is a terrific effort. And then it took what I think was an, an iffy, iffy pass interference call. Well, do you go for two now? Well, I think they've got to go for two. Well, actually, they just need. They don't have to. No, they could go two sevens in a. Yeah. But this is a big play here for yeah, PG, really. Here's Hill. Here's the pitch. End around. Reverse. Get him out of there. Get him. Good block. He didn't get in. Nice Did not play get in. By 21, I believe. Let's get the replay on that, Mike. Sean Lang, I think, is the Indian that makes the play on the corner here. Never seen, I don't think, there was a block in the back right there. Yeah, yeah. Sean Lang, good job, Sean Lang. So, 16-point lead now for the Indians. I would, uh, I would think we're going to see an onside kick here, Jim, but I, I don't know. <laughs> You know, Bob, it's almost that the uh, Cougars are playing with a lot of arrogance. Well, I, I don't know, Jim. I just, uh, they got their touchdown, but they sure wasted some precious time doing it. But the one thing PNG has got to protect against now is the onside kick. Get the hands team out there, and I see some low numbers walking up. See Joey Price out there. Hanks. We think we'd see all the receivers up close. There's Bo Wortham up in the front line. Norton up in the front line. Neeb. PNG doesn't care about the field position now, just the football. Well, Bob the winner gets the Shirts Clemens San Marcos winner next week. Could we be in San Antonio, could be here. So we could be traveling next week. Possibly. Here's the onside kick. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Mark's got it. Covered too. by Boy, the mark. Well, it's still loose. I don't PNG may wind up with it. I think they did. Wow. Are you sure they got it? Let's see. Well, I don't, no, I don't know. No. Did the Indians get it? I believe they did. How? I don't know. Boy, I don't know <laughs> that ball. Let's, can we get a replay? That ball took a crazy bounce. I thought, oh my goodness. Well, Bob, five minutes and 58 seconds to play in this game. Here All right, we go. we'll see it again. The guy does a great There's job. The he gets that high bounce. And I don't know how Lamarck does not get the football. All right, what are the Indians going to do? We're going to find out. Dustin's going to go down. He tried to get around his end, couldn't. Well, and what they got to do is, is make Lamarck burn their other two timeouts if, if they will. I don't think you'll see a pass before third down. Again, the clock moving 542. Many thanks to the Olympic Ad Training and Gymnastics Center, Arabella's Gifts. That's Linda Morgan Allman over there. It's got a great business. American Real Estate, Leslie Simmons. I've seen her name on the board tonight. And Indian Ed of Class of 78. How about Home Care Supply and Pharmacy on Twin, North Twin City Highway, Jared Garrett and Bob West's wife, Jeannie West, over there. Here's the pitch. Hang on to the football. Yeah, that's the uh, operation right now. We're down to the about 5.05. The clock will continue to roll, providing that the Cougars, they're going to call their timeout right now. First Baptist Church of Port Natchez, we're about youth. Many thanks to them. 
the cherry tree on 365 across from Central Mall. Esther, she's supporting the PNG football team for 25 years. The Edison Bennett Law Firm in Port Arthur. Allstate Insurance, Bobby Martin Jr. and Groves, you're in good hands. Green Line Memorial Park, Glen Root. BNB Ice Company, distributors of Ready Ice, Paul Benton. And Southern Superior Mortgage, Warnies. Porlocker over there at the port. PNG class of 1964. Well, Jim, uh, Matt Burnett's got a got an There's our yeah. McFerrin Insurance. Matt Burnett's got an interesting situation now. Do you run the ball again, force Lamarck to take their other their final timeout? Do you throw the ball? Dustin Long's been so effective tonight. Do you throw it and try to get another first down, which or a first down, which in effect would just be a killer blow for Lamarck? The Indians need a first down. Lamarck needs a stop. Well, still at this point, the clock is the biggest ally for these Indians. Bob, only five minutes left. I believe they'll put in. Yeah, I believe they're going to put in the air. Here's Dustin. Catch is made. It's going to be short of a first down to Bo Worthen, but the 49-yard line game tackle. This play they scored their last touchdown on. Lamarck was ready for it that time. Let's see if they got it. And Lamarck's going to save that last time out, but the Indians are going to take their time. Yeah, I, uh, I might even let it down to go down and take a delay penalty yeah, where, the, where the, the ball is on the field. Because the play clock has not started. There it goes. Yeah. He needs to wind it down. I'd, I'd let her go all the way. Don't see Dustin end over end punt. It's going to take a favorable roll. Oh, it's going to be down. Oh, into oh, the end zone. Fell into the end zone with it. Oh, that was so close. That would have. Well, they're still going to have 80 yards to go oh, for a touchdown with four minutes and 13 seconds left. Lamarck's only hope is the big play. You just you can't nickel and dime your way down when you're 16 points down and four minutes left. Well, Bob, a wonderful effort tonight by this PNG defense. Jim, it has been. I don't think anybody would have thought coming in if you'd have said the Indians will have will have hold it, held them to six points with four minutes left in the game. You'd have had to say, hey, that's that's pretty strong stuff, and it has been strong stuff. Here's Hill. Play action. Here comes the pressure, throws on the run, catch in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. So it's second down 10 for the Cougars. Looking to run before he had control of the football. I want to say this one more time for Big J, number 77, his mom and dad, whom happens to be Mark and Fran Domain. They say best of luck, Big J, and he's a big one. Jay, they want to see you play some more football in that purple uniform. With a clock at 4.07. Second down 10. Can the Cougars beat them by passing the football? That remains to be seen. Throwing on the run. Oh! Big time hit, and the clock will roll. Sean Lang. I'm telling you, Golke set the tempo on the first play of the game, and the Indians have continued to deliver shots out there. Bob, this is a huge third down coming up for the Cougars. Well, they got two plays to get it. I well, mean, they're, they're not going to be no more punts tonight nope. in the mark. Here's Hill. Throwing on the run. Quick pass. It's going to be caught depending on the but spot. But he gave up the first down. He's going back away from the mark. You're right, depending on the spot. He's going to be short of a first down. There's an Indian down. Yeah. That's... But he's coming up. Yeah, I, I think he was shaking a bit, but he's getting up. Fourth and less than one for Lamarck. And that's C.J. Blyer. <laughs> Having to do some double duty tonight, Bob, both on offense and defense. Well, let's hope it's not serious. Oh, yeah. he's, uh, they need him. Good to see him walk off on his own power. 
That's important. Fourth down one. Well, Jim, will they run the football and pick up this first down? Looks like they're going to get the wishbone. Yeah. And Here's Hill over center. Quarterback sneak. Did he get it? I believe he does. He wiggled and got it. He wouldn't have had it, but he made a nice second effort there. Got the first down. That'll stop the clock. Move the chains. 327. Now, ideally, Jim, you're, you would be at the line of scrimmage waiting for the ball to be marked and not letting any seconds go off the clock. Now the clock is winding, Lamarck is still in the huddle. They've wasted, it started at 327, so they're gonna waste at least 12 or 13 seconds getting the playoff. We're down to 314, here's Hill. Looking downfield, interception is gonna be made at the 32 yard line. And that was just a prayer, who is that? Oh, that's Chris Golke. That's that's appropriate that Chris Golke would, would get the football. And now we can say the the party is definitely over for Lamar. Turn out the lights. There's the interception. Great play, Chris Golke, and it's just a matter now of running it on out for the Indians. 307 left, and I, you're going to see him run the football now, I'm pretty sure. Lamarck can stop it one time. Here's Dustin. He'll keep it. Stay healthy, Dustin Long. Yeah. They're going to need you next week. Stay healthy. The Indians are going to be playing in the semifinals next week. Won't know until it, that other game is tomorrow, isn't it, Jim? I believe it is. Down to 2.45. Jim, I really don't understand a lot of things Lamarck did tonight. I'm going to credit these Indian coaches one more time. They, they outcoached the Lamarck coaching staff decisively. Here's little Jeff Bergeron and a first down Indians. Well, Jim, what do you think on Rick's auto body excellence? I, I tell you, the PNG defense has done so well. I, I like Justin Baxter's game, and we're going to split it between Baxter. And that's overlooking Long, who's had a great game. But, you know, he's been there before. He's been there before. It's almost expected, but... You got to give Baxter the credit tonight, but Bob, how can the world can you not say the defense? I think we got to go a collective effort. Well, let's split it then. We, we we can do whatever we want. It's it's us and Rick, and I'm sure Rick won't care. No, I don't think so. He we'll will. make it Baxter for the offense and the entire Indian defense there led by go. Chris Golke. Dustin, the smart thing, just going down, and the Indians are going to advance to take on the winner of Shirts Clemens, who's undefeated, Bob West, and San Marcos. And one, one thing this, this game proves again, and we've seen it time and time again in high school football, it's not necessarily the team with the greatest talent or the greatest collection of college prospects, but the best team and the best coaching, and that goes to PNG by a long shot. Well, Justin Baxter, receiver far side. Uh-oh, movement by the right... By the tight end. Just a formality, but that will stop it. Jared Gary, six foot one, 201 pound junior. And Jim better start plugging for the Port Arthur News Friday night experience telecast again. We're gonna need some, uh, especially if we gotta go to San Antonio. And we're talking about breaking out some serious expense there. Well, the way we're gonna approach this, Bob West, is all they gotta do is call 838-9738. And uh, we'll be glad to put you on next week. I'd kind of like to be back here myself. And by the way, let's not overlook that Lamarck had an 18-game winning streak in the Which Astrodome that's going down tonight. Yes, it is. We're down to 119 in this game. Here's little Jeff Bergeron. There's a the flag down. Come back on a hold. Oh, seems like we can't get the clock run out here. 
Let's get some thoughts from Harold Manns, almost some closing thoughts, but he should have the winning coach, Matt Burnett, at some point after the game. Let's go back down to Harold. Guys, you might notice Jeff Bergeron, who just ran that ball, has that protective shield over his face mask. Last week against Brazosport, he had his nose broken. I talked to him early in the game. I said, Jeff, how's your nose? He looks at me and he says, it's had its better days. Then he kind of looks up and says, Mama says it makes me look pretty. So I guess <laughs> okay. Good stuff, Harold. Well, we can't get this final 113 off of here. Now they got it rolling. It's going to be second down and 15. I'll make it third down and eight. They declined it, Bob. Down to 55 seconds. And Lamarck may be offside. Free play, free play, free play. There's a open receiver. Down to the 10-yard line. Who is that, Bob West? Ryan Norton. Well, <laughs> that's a nice punctuation mark from the offense. Wilkie gave the defense the punctuation mark. And Dustin Long has threaded some needles tonight. Oh, this, is a, this is a terrific throw. He just had too much time to operate and with. A nice huh? catch by Norton. Well, PNG in no hurry. I'm sure their fans like to see them score again, but uh, whether they get another one or not, this has been a decisive, decisive victory. Nothing fluky about this. The best team, and I underscore team, won tonight and will keep playing. Now Dustin goes down to one knee. <laughs> hey, Bob, I want to say this. I was thinking about this. I've been waiting. The Lamar Cougars, six-time regional champion. Might I say, there's a new sheriff in town? There's a new sheriff and in town. And it's an town. Indian. And that's right. And it's and an I'm Indian. And I'll tell you what, you asked Tom Halliburton what I told him about this game. I said PNG would win the game because they would outcoach the mark, and they did it. We're going to try to round up Harold Mann in a moment with a winning coach, Matt Burnett, but I assume we can be patient. Our final score is 22 to 6, the Indians over the Cougars, and we'll have Harold in a moment with a winning coach, Matt Burnett. For your team tonight. Uh, we got a great football team. We got, we've got got a great quarterback. You know, uh, we can't do the things we're doing without a great quarterback. And then we got a bunch of good football players all around him, good hard-nosed players that like to play a lot of good hard-nosed defense. So, so I'm real proud of them. What about the crowd that came over from Mid County tonight? I knew that. Yeah, I knew they'd show up. Uh, uh, heck, they, they, you know, they're they're PNG, and you know, we're real lucky that we got it going again. I, I got a good staff. I got good fans. I got you know, I got a good family. Heck, I'm rolling a roll right now. State semifinals next week, Coach. Good luck. Thank you very much, Coach Matt Burnett of the PNG Indians. They come in here tonight, win the region. They knock off the mark. Well, Bob West. They've done it. They're the regional champions. Now it's the state semifinals. Deserving regional champions, Jim. I've been saying for weeks this is a really good team. You remember when we had Neil Morgan on. He said he thought this team could go all the way to the state finals. They, they have just gotten better and better and better from that West Orange start game. They're versatile offensively. They hit you on defense, and they are so well coached. This team may be playing a couple more weeks, Jim. We'll see. Thanks to all the sponsors, and if you want to jump aboard, it's 838-9738. Give me a call or Bob West at the paper, and we'll be glad to put you on. And I'll tell you what, we thank all the sponsors tonight for making it possible. Absolutely. We appreciate you. We hope you're with us next week, and I hope everybody's read our coverage in the Port Arthur News by the time they watch the telecast tonight. No doubt. For Bob West, I'm Jim Barton. Thank many thanks to Mike Sheffield, Harold Mann down on the field, and, hey, our great capable crew, Matt Lumpkin and Marty Simmons, and I'll tell you what, Brian Morgan, an outstanding job on Instant Replay tonight. Very good. He's got a future in his business. That's it from the Afterdome. My final score, the Indians 26, make that 22, and the Cougars 6. Good night, everybody.